Hello there. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what I think is the next big thing in AI, which really is actually already here, but surprisingly, nobody is talking about. It. Everybody's talking about AI agents and autonomous workflows and automating businesses with all sorts of AI integrations. But what those AI integrations rely on is an accurate knowledge base and understanding of a company to actually perform tasks accurately. And that's the part that nobody's talking about and nobody really knows too much about. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through what a vector database is. I'm gonna explain in simple terms uh, the logic behind it and what it is. I'm going to take you through what it's used for. And then I'm going to talk you through the opportunity that I think is massive and it exists in the vector database space and how you can get involved with it. If you're not familiar with who I am, my name is Adam. I'm a low code and AI enthusiast, but before that I was a top 1% freelancer on Upwork and I've completed over 50 projects there for clients all over the world. Since then I went and transitioned into a global low code development agency, which specializes in AI and tech development using low code solutions. And so in that process, I've seen a hell of a lot of applications. I've seen a hell of a lot of AI use cases, and we've actually done some jobs that use this exact technology. And it's something that's really underground. Not too many people are talking about it. And that's why I'm choosing to make a video to explain exactly how all of this works. So to get right into it, let's first start about what is a vector database? So traditionally, when we've talked about applications, we typically talk about SQL or NoSQL databases. And typically that stores data in either documents or in a tabular format, very similar to how Excel works. So the way I typically talk about those kind of databases to non-technical clients is that your traditional database just looks like a number of different tables. Those tables have headings and in the tables, it's populated exactly like an Excel spreadsheet. So your first row has got your headings. For example, if you're storing users, you'd have maybe first name, last name, date of birth and email. And then you just populate that list with all the data. Now, how a vector database works, which is very different to how these traditional database system works, is it works based on similarity searches. Now, I'm gonna jump in here and talk about the basics so that you understand what a vector database is. It is more technical than this and you can dive deeper down the rabbit hole if you want to, but I'm gonna talk about the real basics on how this works. So if we think about a regular three-dimensional Cartesian plane, and if you go back to high school or you know uh, maths class, you might've talked about something like this. And so we've got an X axis, a Y axis, and a Z axis. And in that three-dimensional space, we can plot coordinates onto that Cartesian plane or that map, if you wanna think of it like that. So in this example here, I've plotted three different coordinates. And the way the vector database works is instead of searching through massive tables of data, if you think about an application that has 100,000 users and we wanna find one user when they log in and pull their first name and last name, for example, we have to search through these giant tables to locate that one user. And the way the vector database works is instead of querying information like that, what we do is we query the database with some information and with that information we plot a point on a coordinate system like this and then to find or retrieve information from the database or index is what it's typically called we draw a line to the nearest coordinate and that's our response now that's the really basic use case but you're probably thinking right if i want to query users they're not numbers so how are they getting into an index or a database that looks like this and that's where the technical side of things comes in so with these LLMs or large language models that are out there these days, so we're talking things like ChatGPT by OpenAI, Anthropic, Llama, Grok, all of the common names that you're hearing out there. What those LLMs usually have is a service called uh, embeddings. And what an embedding is, is it's a very large, what's called a vector. So you'll see this here is a coordinate. And what the embeddings do is they re return they return vectors or coordinates that look like this, but have lengths of sometimes they're 1,500 numbers long. One of OpenAI's models returns a vector that's I think 3,076 numbers long from memory. And so what it's doing is it's taking some text input from you, similar to how ChatGPT works, and it's using its this training that it's got to match that text input to a really large number that's thousands of little numbers long, and then it's plotting that into a database. So what we're essentially doing is converting natural language into a number. 
And you're probably wondering how the hell does that work? And to be honest, the LLMs don't really publish exactly how that process works, but I'd assume there's some really deep training to understand they've probably trained the data on millions of chat messages and millions of articles and all those kind of things to try and understand human language and they call it semantic search or semantic meaning and be able to convert that into a number to accurately draw lines between these giant numbers, which really are texts and be able to return responses. So that's the behind the scenes on how these vector databases work. And your, your logical next question is probably, why is this useful? And in what scenarios would I ever need to use some sort of system like this? And that's what I'm gonna talk about now. So why would I ever need a vector database? And how is this gonna revolutionize business activities? And I'll talk about some basic use cases here in detail, but I'm sure you can probably think of, of a million more that are specific to your niche. So some of the examples that this is being used for already today are one is chatbots. Now these chatbots are all sorts of kind of things, but one could be support chatbots. So what you can do is you can upload documents and texts and all sorts of information about your company. And then what you can do is you can use a, for example, ChatGPT and you can train it on your, your knowledge base or your vector database and be able to provide unique support that's just for your business. So when you talk to ChatGPT normally, it's trained on data and you can, you can train an assistant and say, hey, look, this is my company, provide responses that are just specific to my company. But that's not as accurate as actually just restricting it to a vector database or a knowledge base and just using that. So you could, for example, set up a support chatbot for your company that saves your admin team or your staff from having to manually answer support requests all the time. Another one can be invoicing and quoting. So if you're a company that sends out a lot of invoices or a lot of quotes, let's use a construction company, for example, and you go to quote something that you know you've already quoted 10 or 20 times before. Let's say it's bags of concrete for a hypothetical example. Now, what you could do with a, with a vector database is you can store every single invoice quote proposal that you've ever sent out. And in seconds, you can query that database and you can go, hey, look, we're quoting for 20 bags of concrete to be delivered 20 kilometers to this site or whatever the example is you can actually accurately in seconds pull exactly what you've already quoted in the past. And so it, I, I know for a fact a lot of construction companies spend a lot of time sifting through really unorganized data that's all through Google Drive, it's all over the place. I um, mean, this process can sometimes take a very long time. And the Vector database has a lot of use cases that could potentially speed that up significantly and almost even automate the entire thing based on previous examples, uh, because AI trained on really accurate data from your company is going to build you some really solid results in this area. Likewise for project management. So an example for this is if you have a internal CRM and you store similar to a typical Kanban board like Trello, for example, uh, and let's think about a Trello Slack combination. So we actually have an internal tool that operates very similar to Trello and Slack. And what happens is we have jobs, Within jobs, we have a whole lot of tasks, typically in a Kanban board, and then we have a chat. And so what happens is people, the, a, a task will get dropped into the job. It'll start in the to-do column, and then as it gets worked on, it'll move through the doing column, then to the review column, and then the, to the completed column. And at the same time, there might be a number of comments added onto that task. And then in the chat channels, there might be a lot of discussion between the client and developers that are related to that task. Now, what typically happens in most companies is you'll have, let's say you're working on five projects, you probably spend 10 to 15 hours in meetings on most mornings, just covering at where everybody is at on a project. But if you were to store all of the chat history, all of the tasks, all of the comments made on tasks in a vector database, instead of having to have a, a stand-up meeting every morning, just to understand where the developers are on a project, what the client's opinion is on certain changes, all those kind of things. We can use a vector database and an AI agent to go, well, here's all of the chats, here's the position of all the tasks, and all you can, you can just query it and be like, hey, look, what's the status on the McDonald's project, for example, if you're building a tech product for McDonald's, what's the status on the McDonald's project for today and, and what's happened? And the AI agent will pull you an exact list saying, Wendy moved this task from doing to in review and she sent a message to the client just asking for some feedback. Billy went through and did X, Y, Z and he's logged five hours 
on the ticket or whatever the case may be, there's a hell of a lot of opportunity in this area to seriously cut time across a whole range of areas. Now, the last one I'll talk about briefly is inventory management. Now, again, it has some similarities to some of the other things we've already talked about, but let's say for example, you wanted to source a supplier for a certain material that you know you've already sourced before, but you have no idea where that might have been years ago, you've lost the documentation for that, you don't know where that information is. Essentially, you'd be able, if it was all in a vector database, you can query it in seconds via a chat and you'll be able to find the information that you need to source inventory that could be stranded all over the place. Now to summarize this, essentially what all of this is doing is it's bringing your data closer together and making it more accessible. So. All of this is essentially pulling data that I know for a fact most SMEs and large companies have strewn all over the place. It's through missing Google Drive folders, could be on local devices, could be strewn through a number of different CRM platforms, through Slack channels, the list goes on. The idea behind this is to find an easy way to aggregate all of that data throw it into a vector database. And it, again, it doesn't really have to be organized. It just has to be thrown in there. There is a level of organization that needs to happen, but thrown all into there and then accessible to whoever needs to access it within seconds. So you're cutting down serious amounts of time there. And then you're also giving AI agents, which a lot of people are really excited about that are going to help automate manual and boring repetitive business tasks. It gives them the knowledge base or the understanding of your company and its operations to actually make good decisions. And so this kind of leads me into the opportunity and how I think you can actually utilize this and also pitch it to companies uh, because honestly, I think this is the next big thing. And I'll talk about exactly how you can pitch it to companies and what it's gonna be useful for. So the opportunity really doesn't need to sell itself because if you go on LinkedIn, you go on X, you go on any social media, everybody's talking about AI agents and the new things in AI and how it's going to automate everyone's industries and all of those kind of things. But the key thing that nobody's talking about is the only way we can get accurate AI agents and accurate autonomous AI agents to make human decisions without making a lot of mistakes is to train them accurately on the required data or the required information so that they have the knowledge base to make good decisions. Now, I'll give you a quick example here. So one AI agent that we've set up recently is an AI agent to automatically categorize businesses transactions so that when tax time comes around, they don't have to spend hours sifting through all of their previous transactions, trying to dig up receipts and remember what that transaction was actually for. Now, what the AI agent does is, is it basically gets a list of transactions and it passes it to a knowledge base, which has the history of all the previous transactions, storing things like the merchant, the amount, the posted date, all of those kind of things, so that when it goes to categorize a transaction that's already been made before, it knows to assign the correct category. Now, before we were building this, we were using a regular AI agent, but with ChatGPT. And what was happening was, for example, for weekly payroll to some of our developers, we'd send the, the transaction would come through and sometimes the AI agent would categorize that as payroll and sometimes it would categorize it as professional fees. Now, our definition of professional fees is to contractors and payroll is to registered employees. Now, that's a scenario where the chatbot wasn't trained accurately enough on the history of our transactions to be able to decipher who is a contractor and who is an employee. But when you hook it up to a vector database that not only stores all of your previous transactions, but it also stores your employees and their information, it has the knowledge base to make better decisions to accurately categorize transactions. Now that's gonna spread across all of the different facets in business, but to create accurate AI agents, which is the way everything is going, you need to train it on accurate data. And that's where this vector database comes in. Without these vector databases, you're gonna get errors in your autonomous agents, and that's really gonna piss people off. So to make these autonomous agents actually adoptable, they need to get to a point where they generate very few errors or few errors than a human counterpart, and then it's going to be adopted. Now, the last thing I'll talk about is how do you actually set one of these vector databases up, and wh where do I get one? 
So we use Pinecone for the vector databases that we've previously integrated, but there's a number of other vector database platforms out there and you can search them up and take a little bit of a look at them. But essentially the way you'd set these up is you would set up some sort of trigger with the data that you'd like to upsert into your vector database. So in our internal tool, we upsert all sorts of information from user timesheets, uh, just user information in general, employees. We upsert tasks, we upsert jobs, we upsert invoices and quotes, we upsert transactions, all of those kind of things. And we upsert them with a bunch of metadata that allows us to link those records in, an, in the vector database or the index with the records that exist in our CRM's SQL database. So what we do is we set up triggers where whenever that record changes in our CRM, it automatically just upserts and modifies the existing record that corresponds with it in the vector database. So that when we're querying information and we're using the AI agent to categorize transactions, to poll our company and understand where we are at with projects and all the other things that we're setting up AI agents for, it's automatically trained on up-to-date data that's being accurately sent back and forth between our vector database to make sure that the data that we have in there is correct, it's up to date and it's really easily manageable. So where is the opportunity here and how are we going to pitch it to companies? Honestly, I've made a number of videos on the benefits of low code development and AI development, how fast it is, how much money it can save businesses. And honestly, all of that comes underneath this. I think AI is really selling itself at this point. Most businesses know that all of the competition is trying to get their fingers in the pie and whoever's the slowest to adopt this kind of technology is at serious risk of falling behind and falling out of competition. But a really good way to sell this is to set up a number of examples of vector database usage and all sorts of chatbots or CRM integrations that seriously save time showcase that to businesses and I don't think there's going to be any issue in selling this. We've sold a number of these solutions already and the way we really sold it is just by demoing some of the chatbots that we'd already had previously set up. We've demonstrated those and then we've also explained through our internal tool which uses this integration across a number of different business facets. We've demonstrated that and clients have been pretty blown away in, with what kind of things you can deliver with these solutions. In saying that, I would love to hear everyone else's approaches on how they think they could possibly integrate this into whatever solutions they're selling and where you think some serious opportunities could be to set up vector databases to deliver better quality AI solutions for clients or possibly your own business. If you found this video remotely helpful at all, I do make a number of videos on low code and AI solutions. And I also run a completely free community where we discuss all of the new things in AI and low code. And if you're interested in joining that, the link for that will be in the description. I hope you found this video worthwhile and I would love to hear about any of your solutions that do use vector database technology because it's such a new industry. There's so many people building cool things in there and I'd be more than happy to hear about it. Hope you have a good day.